conversations, we do not acknowledge the comments very often. And we also do not thank for the gifts. And the reason for that is because let's say we're talking with Sin, and Sin's decided to say that uh, he likes the jet more than the dragon. I don't know. And it would be a very controversial take, potentially. And we would want to interrupt the very personal and meaningful take that he may have only to cut him off to say thank you for the the fishy thank you for the the gift etc right uh, if you have interest in being on this show you can reach out to myself you can reach out to ari who will be taking a little break for a sec so i'm going to be back to doing full duties that's right we're all we're all worried we don't know how that's going to turn out all right at this time we've got our first guest this evening and you know what while i'm at it while i'm at it if you stick around, I'm not going to tell you when. I'll give you some live fest information too. Did you hear about this? Did you hear that we announced live fest? Put a one in the chat if you heard about live fest. If you stick around, I'll give a little bit of detail. It says details soon to come. I can give you a little bit of detail. All right, but you're gonna have to stick around. Um, coming to the show first. They are not a pastry, but they sure are sweet. It goes by Cinnabong. <laughs> Welcome to the show. What's hey, going man. on, Chris? How's it going, it's so buddy? good to see you. It's so good to see you. You look fresh. Look at you with the vest. You got the thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. I had to. Dapped up, dapped up. You're looking uh, fresh as you did at the last live event because we're gonna spoil it right now. You and I had the opportunity. I had the honor of getting to meet you in person. Yeah, that is correct. Uh, the, and you know, the honor was just as, as big for me as well. Um, I definitely wanted to meet you. Um, as well, I knew the opportunity would probably come there at Live Fest, and um, or, you know our good mutual friend there. I think she made sure that that was a possibility. Like night one, hour one. Was- you and I had <laughs> some extended Capri Sun stays. You know, we had a couple mm-hmm. Capri Suns. We may have had some little mini glizzies uh, together. <laughs> or we we enjoyed food. We had food together, and that's good. But uh, Sven, I know that going to Live Fest wasn't the first time you traveled. We're going to touch on a little bit of that in just a second. But if you could recap, because in honor of announcing Live Fest 2024 today, what was Live Fest like for you? What was it a highlight? Was it worth you making that trip out to, to Live Fest 2023? Um, I mean, it, it, the whole thing was a highlight. But yeah, I mean, for me, the highlight was definitely meeting uh, meeting a lot of the, the friends that I've made on here on the app meeting them for the very first time. This was my very first live event from, from the app that I that I went to. Um, and, the, you know, the, I had a, I had a list, a, a you know, small little list of people that I was really looking forward to meeting. I got to meet, you know, um, they just, you know, blew my mind of just, you know, the amazing people, the type of people that they were. Um, if I would say I was surprised, I was probably surprised just of how much, you know, more of a great human beings that they actually were once I met them, you know, in real life. Um, right. But the the whole the whole experience as a whole was definitely a um, uh, a big um, positive a big positive yeah exactly positive. Um, and, and I enjoyed it. it yeah it was it was uh, great to get to meet you too man and all credit to you for saying that people are better in person I gotta agree with that your your reason is the same reason for me I've been going to the events since 2019 and yeah. it, it you you have the connections that you make online but then when you have them in person it's something completely elevated and we'll talk about live fest 2024 a little bit later today but now we're going to keep on that topic of travel though and somewhere people should travel to that favorite button on sin who's in the box he's the first guest here on suited up said why can you not stay put what is this i hear about you moving not once not twice not three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven how many times have you moved, Sin? Um, I, I think I counted it or I capped it off like at twelve for now. But you know, we're still uh, we're still young, so you know that that number could change. <laughs> Why? What is happening? Are you a government agent? Are you? Do you have to get away? Is the, well, do, does the mafia have a, a hit out for you? What is going on? I mean, you have to ask the ladies that, but no. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, um, I mean, it's funny that you're being a government, but because you know, I was a part of it was because I was a, uh, I, w- I am, a, well, I was a, uh, a military brat. So some of that was in part to do with that, growing up, um, you know, moving around from base to base, because uh, sure. of my, because of my uh, father in the military. Um, but then just coming back, you know, it just it just so happened that we just so happened to move a lot as a family, and um, 
And even still, like now in adulthood, I've still moved around about three or four times myself from then. Uh, so just, you know, racking up those, uh, racking up the different uh, addresses. Trips. <laughs> to help us better understand what that experience was like for you, too, I stayed put my entire life. I've basically lived, and I travel quite a bit, but I live, have lived in the same place. So for you traveling so much, about how long any given period of time were you sticking somewhere? And was that difficult for you to make friendships or know people outside of your immediate family? Great question. Yeah, um, actually, yeah, as a kid, because um, as an adult, it was more within the state, you know, uh, I mean, Texas is a big state, but still, you yeah. know, within the same area. But as a kid, um, I would say I, I think I moved about once every school year, like first grade through fifth grade. It was like in a different school, different area, different city uh, each year. So it was pretty difficult to, you know, as far as the friend making, it got to a point where I was kind of like, you know, I kind of thought, well, why even try to make friends if I know, you know, next year I'm not going to. This is going away. It's tough. It's tough. And it really comes full circle with a place like this where no matter where you go, they're still in the same spot. It's just a virtual experience. Um, now, as a kid, uh, many people watch different types of movies, fairy tales, things like that. There's something that is apparently a pretty big deal. I did not know it was as big of a deal until I watched this movie as an adult but i hear you catch some heat for not being as well versed when it comes to cinema what film is it that i'm referring to son uh, yeah i mean apparently it's a big deal it's a it's a pretty big deal it's a pretty big movie um but i do catch some flack for not watching this uh some movie called the uh, princess bride i don't know if a you've ever heard of it have, i don't know if i've heard yes i've heard of it but i i didn't see it for the first time until i was 21 i think it was 21 or 23 at the okay. time that I saw it for the first time. Why, <laughs> at this point, it's just a protest. It's about sending a message. Why have you refused to watch the classic <laughs> known as a, uh, Princess Bride? It's not the first time I heard that question, but no, yeah, it's uh, uh, it's not so much a refusal. It's just, you know, I uh, from the beginning, I just never got around to watching it. And it was just one of those movies that, you know, I just never had, you know, not that I haven't had the time, I just, need to make the time to sit down and watch to it. I do want to watch it. Don't get me wrong. I do want to watch it. I just haven't had, you know, the opportunity to really sit down and get through it. I hear it's a short movie, so I know it's doable, but still. It's, um, it's, it's hilarious. Fun. It's yeah. really funny. That's that's the deal. Uh, something that people are making time to watch right now is Suited Up. I don't know if you know what, about this show, Sin. It's a Wednesday night show at 9 p.m. where we bring on guests and interview them about their life and things both on and off the platform. I'm Chris, this is Sin. Make sure you're hitting the favorite button on them. We have two more guests tonight, including some information about Life Fest, uh, musicians, and much, much more. Don't go anywhere. Okay, Sin, you haven't taken the time to watch The Princess Bride, but what is your uncontested pick then for a movie? Because you've been watching some other movie when you weren't watching it. So do you have a favorite film? Um, for a favorite film, I wouldn't, I mean, if, if I had to pick one, a classic, I'd say Dumb and Dumber, just because, you know, it just makes me laugh every time I, I watch it, no matter, you know, what, no matter what mood I'm in. I'm, what you know, movie? Jim Carrey. Huh? What movie did you say? Dumb and Dumber. Dumb and Dumber. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's, there's a scene in that movie that legitimately makes me angry. Oh, it did. As a kid, it made me angry. And it was just the culmination, I think, of everything that happened. But it's at the very end where the tour bus pulls over and says, hey, we're looking for two guys that are going to uh, be our, our lotion text or whatever for an entire summer. Do you know two guys? And he's like, that way. And then he stops and he's like, my friend's an idiot. <laughs> that way. You know? yeah, that, you classic. Know. Our pet heads are falling off. It's classic. Um, yeah. You're a Jim Carrey fan, though. Yes. Yeah. I love Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey. Yeah. It makes me sad to see um, our, our childhood stars and the people that we looked up to. Um, you know, time has no mercy, right? And exactly. I feel like if time's gone, Jim is, is um, you know, he's, he's taking a step back and I miss seeing him in films. I agree. Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. So in the meantime, you have kept busy in other ways, though, when not watching Jim Carrey, one of them being a sport. Now, I take you to be a pretty nice guy, but the sport that you play, I'm assuming takes some grit that you got to throw some elbows, throw, throw a few hands. What, uh, what sport is this? Um, well, the sport that you know, I partake in, I play in, but also 
uh, mainly officiate or like as a referee, but um, but I do play as well. Uh, is uh, the sport of roller uh, roller derby? Um, you are a roller yeah. dober, a do- <laughs> roller derby officiant. Yeah, I officiate as well. Yeah, um, uh, I play I play in a in a in a what's it called um, in a men's team, but then also officiate when I officially officiate. Um, it's for a women's uh, women's league, all women's league uh, roller derby team. Um, and I've been doing that since 2010. Um, so it's something wow. that I'm very passionate. I'm getting to to roller derby. That's only I thought that was just a sport that was in 80s movies. I didn't even know that that actually even existed. <laughs> That's what a lot of people think. Yeah, exactly. Myself included for for a while until you know I was sucked into it. But um, no, I was. Uh, I, I always. I, I started off as a rollerblader as a kid, um, and then I got into roller skating um, in my uh, like junior high years. And that um, I was actually out in a roller rink um, skating around, and one of the girls from the team saw me, and she you know she came over. I guess they 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 were in need of volunteers or officials so she came over saw that i could skate you know i had some skills in the skating department and asked if i wanted to officiate uh you know this sport called uh women's roller derby, roller derby. and i was like all right sure why not so I feel, I feel like that story plays out like the beginning of an 80s <laughs> high track. like hey hey so i noticed you were skating you've got some pretty good moves yeah, yeah. you can yeah. say that so the gals and i I got a question, we a short one for the team. What do you think? You're in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But you know, you know what I'm saying. All right. That's, a, okay. that's amazing. Anyway, that's amazing. <laughs> anyway uh, you, so you do roller derby. What are the rules to roller derby? As people, as a general audience who probably doesn't watch roller mm-hmm. derby, is it you get the ball around the circle and trip uh, some people? What what is what's the rule here? There there actually there is no ball. Um, but I, I would say it's it's kind of like skating, skating around a track mixed with like NASCAR. Um, that's what I would say it is. So basically, it's you know people you do score points and it's you know people that have a a star on their helmet because you do you do have to wear equipment obviously uh safety equipment. People that have the stars on their helmet, we call those the jammers, and they go around the blockers of the opposing team, um, you know, doing laps and pretty much uh, without getting too into it, um, each blocker that you pass by, you know, during the um, during that what we call jams, which are three three minute increments in the game, um, you score points, and obviously, you know, the, the the team that scores the most points at the end of the game wins, uh, and then you know, but everything in between, you know, there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of uh, shoving uh, a lot of elbows being thrown um yeah a lot of uh, a lot of action um and i will say the women's are definitely much more uh aggressive than the men so are they really yeah yeah is, is this bad <laughs> blood like this is the place to do it i mean i don't know yeah whatever you want to call it but yeah it's it's something <laughs> okay all right well check it out if someone wants to get involved with roller derby do you suggest they just hit the google and say local roller derby team is this like a, yeah. a co-ed thing or is it like a i don't know sometimes people have like an an after work softball team is yeah. there after work roller yeah. derby yeah well they do have yeah they do have co-ed teams um you know and of course they have the all women's team as well i mean this the the, the women's league that i'm uh, associated with um it is semi-professional so there is like an actual league nationwide or actually it's international uh, not just nationwide it's international <laughs> Um, so, but if you're like in a major city, like, you know, like your New York's, Chicago's, LA's, Philadelphia, you know, uh, Florida, tech, anywhere in the, in the major cities, I would say you, you more than likely you have a professional, uh, roller derby team, uh, that in your cool. area. So I would look what it is, up. What is the Super Bowl of roller derby? Is there it's, a big main event? Yeah, it's the, um, the W, the WFTDA, which is the Women's Flat Track Derby Association. It's, uh, the, the WIFTA um tournament the yearly ter- yearly tournament that they have uh, every year i think it takes place in uh during like november december um and it's basically yeah like the top i think there's the top 28 teams from around the world um they usually pick a, a city a spot neutral spot to go um and have this tournament and yeah it's you know winner take all best of the best uh whoever you know comes out on top at the end is the champion of the world in uh I, world derby i dig it I dig it. That is very cool. The WIFTA, check it out. It's in a city near you, possibly. You have to hit the Google, though. Exactly. Um, 
<laughs> so I'm looking at the time here. And by the way, if you have not hit the favorite button on it, make sure that you do. He's on Suited Up. It's a weekly interview and talk style show Wednesdays at 9 p.m. It says here that one of your favorite stories to tell while streaming is how you got into the app. Is there a, a special circumstance around it? What What's the story here? Yeah, um, it, I mean, it's it's a it's a story that I, I do. Uh, I mean, I, I do like to tell. Um, it basically, you know, I came around the app around uh, the time that a lot of us came around, around the pandemic time. Mm -hmm. um, and at that time, I was coming off. Uh, I was actually came, just came off of, of an injury from playing, you know, from uh, well, actually from officiating, not playing, from officiating yeah. roller derby. I, had, you know, snapped my ankle. Uh, I dislocated my ankle and mm -hmm. snapped, you know, slapped, broke a couple of bones. That's not what little John said. You said snap your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, so you know, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was coming off a very, uh, you know, I was in a very dark place mentally just because, you know, I couldn't do the thing that I was, that I love to do. Um, and I was, you know, and then the pandemic happened. Uh, so that just, you know, added on top of that. So I was in a very dark place. Um, basically, you know, um, I knew about the, I, I, at that time I was part of the, you know, the POF uh, mm -hmm. app um, where I came into um, and live streaming had just came into to play. Um, so I had heard about it. I kind of dabbled into a couple of streams. Um, I did see, you know, I'm a visual person, so I, I did run into, you know, this person who I eventually uh, uh, stumbled into their stream with later on uh, on there. So, you know, I had kind of had that in my mind. Um, pretty much, long story short, um, I had just come off, like I said, I was in a very dark place in, in my life. I had just come off uh, a, a, failed, uh, a failed attempt to, you know, for lack of a better word, we can do it. not so good things to myself. <laughs> um, and so I was, like I said, I was in the dumps. Um, I stumbled into this stream, uh, to the streamer, this uh, lovely streamer, and um, uh, who's a very dear friend of mine. I, I'm sure a very uh, dear friend of yours as well, my uh, our good friend, uh, Miss Katie B. I went into her stream um, yeah. and pretty much, you know, went in there, faved her and everything. I got, you know, the, the whole introduction as everybody gets whenever they fave. Uh, get their fave on in there, um, and it's 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 a story I like to tell because it's I, I always say that it's always the small you know you talk about the small things little small acts of uh, kindness sometimes that people yeah. do that you know make a, a huge difference and that's something that that really took place uh, that day um, because yeah because of that you know the way I was treated and everything and welcomed into the, the uh, into the community her community um, it really you know it really uh, moved me and it really uh kind of shifted the way out you know my mindset was at that time and mm -hmm. i always say you know even to this day uh, you know that that saved my you know she saved my life because that's exactly what it was and you know for ever since then um i stuck around in the app stuck around went you know i've met other incredible people along the way as well other great communities other great streamers uh yeah. you know, great admins and everything so uh, it, but it all stemmed from that that little that little moment of time that little moment um so I always it's, tell people it's always important to you know how you treat people. It does make a difference. It really, it really does highlight. I think something that even I can take for granted sometimes is while we're broadcasting and while other people are coming into our streams, we don't know the circumstance of that person's day, year, life, whatever. Um, and you can choose to be anything. So why choose to be mean? And I know that can sound corny, but it is a real reality, especially for many people who are on a platform like this we're looking to meet people it might not just be because you're bored one day i mean in your case it was a mixture of boredom and the place that you were in but yeah having good camaraderie the people you surround yourself with i always say that um it it is what you uh it'll be what you <laughs> how can i say it like it's what i always say and I'm like oh the words that i say but basically the point of it is it is this experience will be what you make it what you choose yes. to perceive it to be will be what it is if you choose to perceive that's a negative toxic place and that's what it'll be if you choose to perceive and surround yourself in environments that will support and listen and be places of friendship then that's what it'll be you decide it off my soap box 100%. but sam we're, we're so happy that you are here we're this is a thing we're all grateful for and thank you for being the person that you are while i've got you before we go are there anything uh, any topics anything that you'd like to highlight go over before we say goodbye for now uh i mean i not other than what we talked about i mean i do have uh i don't know time bearing but i do have just a couple of people if i can just to you know kind Why of not? shout out go for it. all right 
uh, I'll, I'll try to make this as quick as possible. Um, and you know, this is in no particular order. Uh, you know, and if I forget anybody, please don't get mad at me. But I just want to shout out just the, you know the, the amazing people that I've met along this whole journey since I've been on the app. Uh, I'm gonna start out with my boys. Uh, uh, just uh, give a, squ a quick shout out to uh, Pika, Jimmy Carbs, Blake, Mojo, Swanee, George, Rob, John B. Uh, my my B team fellas, Devil and Ghosty, uh, Renee, Grumpy, Big Dog, rest in peace. Um, Kid Sensation and AJ Cali, I appreciate you guys so much for everything you guys have done for me so far uh, uh, in here, uh, on and off the app as well. To my ladies out there, uh, NorCal Curves, Olive Shadow, Vodka Lux, Tatiana, Cream, Cheryl B, Lisa, Shay, uh, and Jay, um, I appreciate you guys, appreciate you ladies, everything that you guys have done for me as well. Um, much love to you all. Um, and last but not least, of course, you know, I wasn't going to forget. Uh, you ain't gonna catch me slipping on here, but of, of course, last but certainly not least, uh, my dear, our dear friend KDB, thank you so much for everything, everything you've done for me. I appreciate you so much, um, on and off the app for all the support. I appreciate it all. Um, and as I quite and as I said, you know, quite lit literally, uh, if it wasn't for you, I, I probably would not be here. So um, thank you, thank you, and thank you, thank you very sure, much. Sure. Hey man, uh, legend right here in the building. He's a great guy. His name's Cinnabon. You can call him Sin. He's right there. Hit him with the favorite. Thank you so much for being here, dude. Cheers, cheers, cheers. I can't wait to see you at the next live fest. Nope, you don't Likewise. get to see that. Yes. Oh, you're leaving. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's going to go. He, he, can, he couldn't contest it. There's no way. Uh, my name's Chris. So great to be here with you. <laughs> this is a show that happens every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Did anyone catch the vibe that Sin's a bit of a smooth operator? You know, like he, he could be, he might be a little smooth. I think he might be a little smooth. I met him at first. He was he was pretty cool, pretty cool, you know. Uh, my name's Chris. It's great to be with you. Live Fest 2024 was announced. Now, I'll give a couple bits and pieces of information in case you missed it and also give you a, a little extra, a little extra information because, you know, we're here. Why not? Now, Friday, I'll do the full deal. I'll do the full deal. I won't give you itinerary for each individual day, but I'll give a look little extra information um but as you saw live fest was announced it's being uh, held in orlando florida it's the 7th 8th and 9th if you are a top badge or a vip you should have received an email as an rsvp list so it's a list to sign up and say hey i intend to buy a ticket i intend to buy a ticket now you didn't you did hear correctly i said the 7th 8th and 9th that means that this is a three-day event this year, and that's three days of things being planned, not just two, like last time. So this time we extended it to three days. We've already been planning events, and I can't wait to get to tell you what some of that is. But as soon as we're able to get the location locked, that's when we announced it. So as soon as we could, which was today, that we could officially announce it. So that's confirmed. Orlando, Florida being held the 7th, 8th, and 9th. I'll give you some more information about Live Fest later in the episode but for now if i can get our second guest to please request the box miss joanne uh with three a's i would also like to say thank you to a few gifters uh while she's requesting the box coming in in 10th place we've got beautiful red with the birthday coming up chrissy in the ninth place spot eighth place we've got zola seventh place karma sixth place lucifer fifth place brody fourth place raven top three for this evening so far we've got assassin with Ant in the front. In second place, we got another person supporting Lucifer. And in first place, we've got our third guest this evening, Ninos, dropping a lot of coins. Okay. On that note, please welcome to our second guest to the box. She doesn't just go by, by Joanna. She's so spectacular that she's got the three A's at the end. The triple A for the triple awesome, Joanne. Uh. Hello. <laughs> Great to be with you. Good to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. This is a, a conversation that has been in the making. We see that jacket behind you, by the way. Oh, What's yeah. The... I just got it this like last week. So, yeah. That is a prestigious bit of a of a gear you got there. I mean, what do you what do you think about being a boss on the platform? Does it come with the perks? Do you think? It's it's a it's a heavy crown to have. What are your feelings on the boss bed? Yeah, it came with like pros and cons. I love the sparkly. Every time I typed, the sparkly mm -hmm. was really pretty. 
Um, but it came with a lot. I don't know. You just see people and you know people coming in. Yo. Um, yeah, but I mean, it accidentally happened. Like I just spent a lot that month, and so. <laughs> I would like to clarify that that is a pretty big accident. <laughs> to make <laughs> like i wasn't going for it i didn't know how much <laughs> uh, I, I, won't, I, I didn't know how much i had to spend um to be one so i mean like, i think we've all woken up from a good time of a night of capri suns going whoa i did not remember getting that much pizza uh for you that's one type of credit card <laughs> statement to open so all the power to you and <laughs> bless you for the support in the community um I do have an actual follow-up question though for that. And is that you said it accidentally happened. You kind of fell into it. Mm -hmm. What compelled you to want to support community or support the community the way that you did? Yeah, I've been like super blessed. And I feel like I've created, like we've created a little community in my stream of like my people that really have my back and are there for me all the time. And so I just love giving back. Like I'm a giver. I love supporting the people that support me. So it's so hard for me, like, not to go back to my people and, like, be there for them. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I just, like, love giving back to, to my community. Well, it's on brand for you because something that I know about you is professionally that carries over. You're, you're involved in social work. Mm -hmm. uh, that's definitely a labor of love. It's something that is not for the faint of heart. How long have you been involved with it? Was there something underlying that motivated you to get into it? Yeah, it started when I was like an undergrad, um, getting my bachelor's. I became a volunteer with like foster kids and I knew mm. I wanted to be like a caseworker someday and make the system better. And so then um, eventually I graduated with my bachelor's and then I went on to get my master's and when I was a caseworker. So then I became a caseworker when I got my degree. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to do like bigger things like more like macro like change the system yeah um, and so i couldn't do that in the position i was in and so i went and got my master's and i'm in a position where i can help like influence policy and make like actual change happen at a systemic level and wow so, yeah. i'm not i'm not about to get at you like you're running for office or anything but those are <laughs> those are some noble aspirations and things to want to do uh I'm sure there's some sensitivity too, but I'm very interested. <laughs> I'm really interested in knowing more about that. How about this? Can you tell us something that um, you have been a part of or helped put in place that you feel like has made a difference? Um, like at the direct level, it was really like, I got a message from a mom one time telling me, like it was maybe like six months after I had returned her kiddo to her, just telling me how much of a difference I had made in her life. Um, because yeah. like I believed in her and, and so that message was really impactful I had a teenager that I was a worker for and she reached out to me like later after she had been adopted asking me to go to her graduation so like those direct stories and then I think at that direct level I saw a lot of like disproportionality in the system so it was a lot of children of color like not going home as quickly as they could and so that really pulled at my heart mm -hmm. um, and I knew that that's really like I wanted to change the system uh if you're just now joining uh, you're definitely coming in a pretty heavy topic uh we've got joanna in the box boss badge current guest on suited up every wednesday 9 p.m don't go anywhere a lot more show still i gotta fall back though to something i asked earlier is was there something that cat that, that set this emotion was there a catalyst because that's that's a lot of life, a lot of dedication, a lot of mental fortitude to dedicate into something. And if and if it's just that, hey, you said I want to help people, and that sent me on the path, that's a good enough answer. But I feel like to the extent that you've done it, there had to be something more. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I grew up with some trauma myself. I always had both of my parents, but I witnessed, you know, some messed up things myself, sure. like you know, domestic violence and just different traumas, and so. I don't know, I guess when I became an adult and I saw children in the system, it just really, like I saw them stay in the system for months and months and months and not getting out and workers being, you know, overloaded with, with a caseload and not getting kids back home. And right. I just, I don't know, I just pulled out my heart. I just wanted to help. My mom also has a degree in like social work. And so I think it's just maybe ah. false from that. I'm not sure. sure. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. well, it makes sense. And 
and you're doing great things with it. You said that from a macro level that you want to make change. Does this mean that you want to get more into policy, that you're looking to see, see a capital of some sort, or you want to legislate? What What's the, the Joanna long-term game? For now, I'm good and like where I'm at right now. I really love what I'm doing like in my career. And so mm -hmm. I really love where I'm at right now. Um, like has a good like work life balance where I can. It's not too much, but I'm do, doing a lot. Um, and so I don't know, maybe like in five years, I would consider director type of positions like something a little higher and then yeah you know, one of our last directors went to work to the White House. So I don't know, we'll see, but, um, uh, you know, <laughs> not saying anything. I'm not saying I'm going to go to the White House, but. <laughs> That's incredible. That's huge. We'll, well see. That does, that does take up quite a bit of mental space, I'm sure, but it's something that you love. And they say when you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. Yes. You say, right? That's so true. <laughs> it's so true. It's like an amazing place to be where you do something that you love. And when you see like the outcomes of your work, like the fruit of your labor is just amazing. I, I, mm. I'm so blessed just where, where, yeah. with where I'm at in my career. Yeah. Well, definitely doesn't go unnoticed because people show love back to you. In fact, one of your best memories involve a group of friends, possibly family. Uh, what was that experience? What was the thing that, that happened for you? Like one of my best memories ever, just in life. Well, you, it's on the prep sheet. I was teeing oh. you up. <laughs> I can't remember what I said. about the surprise party, Joanna. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yes. It's on the sheet. You it. That was yesterday. I filled that out yesterday. A lot of it has happened within the last. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, what's <laughs> happened that you didn't pay your internet bill? Oh. No. <laughs> you're back you're back well, okay, yeah. tell, tell us what was the surprise party it was really amazing it was for my birthday um when i turned 30 they threw me a big big party um with live music i was not expecting it at all it was just amazing i felt very loved and it was just a great yeah great time with family oh. and friends i was very very social like before COVID, like I love doing stuff in person. I feel like during COVID, I kind of started being more in my little shell, but um, I love spending time with friends and family. Yeah. It was for oh, your 30th. On the app, I did too. On the app, on my birthday, people here went like it was, and it was a dragon party. It was, it was a dragon party. Yeah. Well, it makes sense with the boss badge. But just the... before I had a boss badge, <laughs> people like me before I gifted. It was but, in December, <laughs> no, before I had the badge. Really, though, uh, back on the, the surprise party, though, I get teary-eyed when my friends remember or think to bring me a coconut water from the store or something. Mm -hmm. They threw you a whole party. Uh, are you known to be in a group where your friends really go that extra or do that for each other? Do you have a, a group of friends Usually like that? Usually we just, like, plan things. Like, we'll plan dinners or to go out so i was a little surprised that they pulled off a surprise for me yeah mm -hmm. that's cool i don't know if you heard about this there was um a bride recently they spent like six million dollars on rihanna for their wedding um yeah i i have absolutely nothing to do with you just sometimes <laughs> i think things and i think i might be able to turn into a conversation and sometimes you had a, at a dead end if you haven't make sure you're hitting the favorite button on joanna she's our second guest this evening on suited up uh joanna you uh have a, a listed on in your fun fact something that i guess you want to make clear um <laughs> it was just a fun fact i was like what are fun facts about me i didn't have any right. time to ask my stream so this is a fun fact this is not me. These are her, her own words. Um, you, when it comes to your ethnicity, I guess people have you have don't know your ethnicity, and this is I what you gave us to work. I should have had you guess before I. I should have just had you guess because eighty percent like or like eighty five percent of the people that go into my stream think I'm Asian. There's nothing wrong with that, but like mm. I'm not. Well, I get that. I actually get that too. I'm half Mexican. Um, okay. And a lot of times people think that I'm I mix differently sometimes. So I, I guess I understand that. Um, are you involved with uh, that aspect of your family? Or do you um, have like any traditions or things like that? Is it, does yeah. it play a role in your life? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty Mexican. Um, I go back home like as much as I can, like every other year. Um, I 
try to visit Mexico when I'm bilingual fluently. Um, wow. I, yeah, I, I stay in touch with my family in Mexico. I, my, yeah, I, I love so, my roots. So when you say go back home, do you mean that you were born in Mexico? I'm learning Arabic. I was born in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Wow. When did you come to the U.S.? I was three years old. Three years old. Wow. Mm -hmm. And um, who from your family? Was it, uh, did, did a group of your family move here? Mom, mom, dad situation? My dad was like coming back and forth to work like in the fields and stuff. And then sure. it was when Reagan was president and there was like an amnesty for folks that were working in agriculture. Mm -hmm. And so he was able to get us visas and bring, bring, bring us over here. Wow. And then, and you said you take trips to Mexico. So uh, what's life like back where some of your family's at? Do you, uh, you have any fun things that you like to do there that you don't do in the U.S.? Yeah, I love, I love being home. Um, we live on the coast. So it's like literally on, on the beach, pretty much every time I go, we're like at the beach all the time. The weather's amazing. Um, I love being at the beach. It like really fills my soul and like just makes me forget about everything. So I have that there. I have a lot of family. Um, my parents have like lots of siblings and I just have a lot of cousins and aunts and uncles and we find a reason to celebrate anything and everything. And so the food, I eat all the food I can when I go there. Um, yeah, I, I love going home. That's cool. You, can, you you referred to it as home several times uh, and you said you left when you were three. So what makes it feel like home uh, versus where you're at now? I think it's just like, yeah, like when I go there, I just have this like strong sense of belonging. Like I'm not different, even though they don't hmm. see me. They see me as like, I'm from over here. But like me, when I go there, yeah, the culture like here, and I think maybe it's because where I work, I work with a lot of Caucasian people. <laughs> and like, I just I'll often don't feel like I fit in or like, I feel like that imposter syndrome sometimes, right? Where like, okay. I'm not represented often. Like someone that looks like me is often not like represented in like, you know, higher positions. There's no president that looks like me. There's no, you know, like people in, in certain positions don't look like me. And when I go there, like, I feel like I'm represented. I, I see myself and my, sure. you know, so. Yeah, no, I mean, everyone's experience is unique and perceptions are based on their own experiences. Uh, and so if you go there and you're with your family and it feels like a warm environment, that's a good thing. And I'm, I'm happy that you have a place like that. Yeah. So when it comes to the future, then what uh, what's next for you? I mean, we announced Live Fest 2024. <laughs> I saw some for top badge in the chat. Is there Are there plans on app, off app that you're looking forward to? Yeah, I mean, on app, I'm really enjoying streaming. Like it's such an amazing time. I love the, my people. Um, I came here like when I was in a dark place, I started streaming, like it really helped me with a lot of stuff I was dealing with personally. And I'm forever grateful for that. And so it's always a good time and never feels like a chore. I've said like, if it ever starts feeling like a chore, I would not stream because it's like fun and a positive experience. And so um, I love it. I'm gonna continue, see how we we do. Um, I've had a lot of amazing support from amazing people, made a lot of connections from all over the world. So I'm looking forward to continuing that. I applied for yeah. my top badge in December. So we'll see um, if I make the cut. <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, yeah, just continue to stream. I love it. Yeah. I love it. That's cool. Uh, we, we've gotten to know you quite a bit, but I'm interested to know a bit more from off the platform before we, we wrap our conversation. We know that you like to travel. We know that you like your time with your family in Mexico and that you're involved with social work. But what are some other ways you decompress? Do you have any other hobbies or, or interests that people might, might not know about? Um. I have two boys, uh, sons, so they play basketball. They're like really, they're good, they're into sports. So I like love watching their games, going to their games, yeah. um, spending time with family, having drinks here and there. Sometimes we have a few drinks on my stream, <laughs> um, sure. socializing. Yeah, but like not like huge hobbies other than I think, yeah, watching sports here and there. Um, and yeah. Sports, so basketball basketball because your sons. that's what they play yeah and soccer some soccer i grew up i played soccer growing up but they played so soccer. is there a sports team that you don't miss like you'll watch them you'll see i actively seek out watching them play like professional sports it could be any sport 
Mm. It could be yeah. roller derby. You could be I like, I'm a, hard, a diehard derby. fan of anyone. Like I, when I can, if I have time and if a sport like it is Oregon State University, like that's where I graduated in college. And so that's mm -hmm. one of my teams, like the Beavers. Um, the Beavers? Or the Blazers from Portland, Portland Blazers, um, if they're on. But I'm not like, I'm going to drop everything to go watch a game. I don't know. <laughs> not that I don't know is crazy. Something about the stop on real quick. I don't know how intimidating of all the animals in the whole world that could be picked. <laughs> they picked the ones that redistribute the flow of water. It's an Oregon thing. All right. Well, Oregon. Can we get a Google search of what is the most dangerous animal in Oregon? That's got to be like mountain lions or something, right? Oh, yeah, like, I think so. Maybe. Is there a raven? Yeah. All right. Anyway, that sounds good. Before we wrap up, are there any last things you'd like to plug, say, what we've got you, Joanna? I don't think so. No, just thank you for having me for the invite. Um, and thank you for all my, I see everyone here. I've seen all the gifts. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. Thank you for being here with us. Um, yeah, thank you to my yeah. people because that's why we're here literally because of them. So yeah. well, shout out, shout out to the peoples. All right, yeah. Yes. So thank you for being here. Hit the favorite button, Jan. She's our second guest this evening on Suit Up. Thank you for being here. <sighs> beep, 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 beep. The air horn. Welcome to it. It's suited up. It's a weekly interview and talk style show where you can get to know some of your favorite people that you may just not have met yet. Uh, we do have to thank our gifters this evening. If Ninos will please request the box, he is our third guest this evening. A lot of hype. We hear about this. So please request the box there. I'd like to give a shout out to the top 10 gifters so far this evening. 10th spot, we got Chrissy Kaysal, ninth place, Zola, eighth place, Karma, seventh place, Brody, sixth place, Lucifer for top edge, fifth place, Raven, fourth place, Assassin, top three, Lucifer. Second place, another person who likes Lucifer. First place, Ninos, who we're about to be joined with. I said I'd give a little more information around LifeFest. So if you are a top badge or a VIP, should have received an invite uh, requesting to know if you would like to go to LifeFest. This is just a sign-up form, so please respond to that. You don't want to miss out. May I remind you that LifeFest sold out last time in two and a half weeks. Two and a half. And that was before any of us knew how fast it would sell out. So please, if you even have the inclination that you're going to try and make it work, make sure that you put yourself on that sign-up sheet because you do not want to miss LifeFest. We're doing it even bigger this year. So what's something different that you can expect to see this year without spoiling too much? Well, for one, there's another day of activities and planned events. In fact, there are more planned events for each day. So there's much more to do at this live fest. We did a great live fest last time. So many great memories, a lot of fun things happen. But we know that organized events where we can come together and socialize are really important. So we're adding to it. So what else is going to happen? Well, I can tell you that there is a major event that will be happening during live fest that's directly tied to the live community. So I'm just going to put that out there. I'll let you guess as to what it is. I might even be announcing this Friday specifically what it is because it's a for sure of something that we're doing. So I can tell you three days of events, more planned events that will be happening. Please go sign up and register if you're a VIP or a top badge. It's very important that you get that registration. Uh, and then lastly, that it's going to be a longer event than the last one. So there you go. Oh, also, it's in Orlando, Florida. So you can plan an extended trip around it, too. You can go to Disney, Busch Gardens, Universal, hit the beaches, take a short trip to Miami, do some legendary clubbing, get a Capri Sun in, maybe catch a concert, check out the, the sun, whatever you want to do. It's, it's in the summertime. So there's a lot to do. Anyway, that's what I'll say for now for Life Fest. Now, coming to the box, our third guest this evening, he says his name is I Am, declaring Ninos, welcome to the show. Our third guest this evening. Hello. It's good to see you. Chris, thank you for having me on the show. I want to say I'm not suited up with you, but I am dressed up What's with up? you. You got the puka, the puka uh, shells. Is, is it because Live Fest was announced today? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Coordinated. 
That's, that'd be a perfect live fest fit. It, it's a uh, very um, tropical lease. Honestly, I've never been to live fest, but I really did want to go. So probably this year. Okay, well, let's take the probably off and just call it this year. This year. This year. Okay. Oh. <laughs> You don't have to agree with everything, but I like that you do. <laughs> All right, so Ninos, welcome to the show. You've got some crazy support going on in here. A lot of uh, crowns rolling by. How'd you how'd you develop this type of family? What are you doing right? Honestly, in my streams, we just hang out. It's nothing really special. And there's not really there is content, but my content is just hanging out, vibing. People hang out with me. I I'm a big supporter. I get supported as well. Um, and the 19th of this month will be my three years on here. Okay. So I will be having a three-year okay. party on the 19th. But besides that, I just help people out, people that go through a hard day or through a hard lifetime. I help them out. They help me out. I love it on here. Yeah. And, you know, uh, I am known to sometimes give people a hard time on this show. And I can tell you, you'll be a good sport about things. Um, would you consider yourself to be a, a detail or <laughs> You need the light back. Do you need the light back? Yes, please. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we can wait for you to do that. Uh, but, I, you know, uh, would, would you consider yourself to be a detail-oriented person? Honestly, yes. Huh. Excellent. And... Um, go on. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, here, I'm setting you up here. It's because... For those of you who do not know or have not been on the show or, or submitted to be on this show, um, we asked some primer questions ahead of time about folks to help give me directions to steer these conversations. Um, and here's two example questions. Has there been a time you were afraid? Nino's response, yes. A time you were surprised? Yes. <laughs> uh, honestly, big shout. I also want to give a big shout out to uh, Secretary, Secretary Ari for allowing me to be on here and big shout out to Chris Casper, but I honestly filled that out last minute and the fun facts. I'm just, 100%. I'm just, I'm just messing with you. It's totally fine. <laughs> because that's what I'm here for. I'm here to explain on those things. Okay, so let's just roll the dice and I'm going to pick one of these and let's find out what it is because I'll be just as surprised as everyone watching when you tell us. Uh, Nina, tell, tell us about uh, the, the time you were surprised. What was it? The time I was surprised on here was I didn't know I had all this support. Sure, yeah. And they, like, if I'm not streaming for a day or, like, for a couple hours, I'll have everybody messaging me, like, when are you getting gone? Why aren't you not on? Like, they encourage me and make me want to keep continuing to stream, and they just put me in a better mood. I go through really hard days here and there, so I like to stream to get in a better mood, and my people are always there for me. And they're always, yeah. and they're in here as well. Big shout out to all you guys. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, something time, uh, <laughs> I know words, sometimes people will use the phrasing in real life, but I do think that this is real life. Would you agree that this can Honestly, become like yes, Because the friendships I've made on here are closer than that, like people in actual real life. This is real life as well, but I'm saying like the friends I have that I went to school with or whatever, the friends that I've made on here are closer to me than my actual people. Yeah. Like it's crazy how an impact it does on you and your people. Definitely. And it's something to be said about not having to physically be by someone to still feel like you have a connection to them. Um, yeah, and uh, I've, I've experienced that firsthand as well along with you. Was there, was there a motivation that had you take that leap to say, hey, I want to start getting on here consistently and wind Before up making friends? Before I started friends? streaming, I was a gifter. And I okay. didn't see myself streaming, but everyone kept pushing me. I said it would be great at streaming, and I checked it out, and I loved it. Yeah. What made you want to switch from being a viewer? Uh, I'm sorry, being a gifter into a viewer, because it is it is a transition. What made me switch? I'm both. I still gift and stuff. I view people I watch. What made me switch? Enjoy it and to lose to try it or nothing to be sorry about so i got on in the beginning obviously when you first start it's kind of slow you have to build your fan base build your support but when time went by i just started liking it better and better yeah did you have any reservation or did you feel any angst about hitting that go live button did it, did it feel intimidating or you're like you know what i think i could be a natural 
Well, Honestly, just... in the beginning, I was kind of anxious and nervous pressing that like button. Yeah. But after I started pressing it often, people were just really amazing. Yeah. You get a little it, more used to it. And it made me continue wanting to stream. For sure. For sure. And you've done it now, as you did just mention. The 19th will be your three year anniversary of this. That's that's a chunk of life. I mean, that's a yeah. bit of time. Um, during that time, do you feel like you've learned anything or is there a memory or something that's been added to your life because of it? I've honestly definitely learned a lot of stuff. My people always give me positive vibes, positive energy. If I'm feeling down or if they're feeling down, I always bring them up. And what I've learned is never give up. Keep trying, stream daily, and keep going for your goals. Don't ever give up. Yeah. And it helps to have those people around you along yes. the way. Yeah. Because oh. if you're around a bad energy or bad vibe, they'll just put you in a bad energy and a bad vibe. You have to always have people that uplift you and put you in a good mood, and you do the same to them as well. Correct. You are the company that you keep. Okay, so so Ninos, Ninos, we've learned a bit about you on the platform, but now let's let's get a little bit off the platform. Let's find out the day to day, some of that kind of stuff. So, do you have a hobby, any type of passion thing that's a big time sink for you? Um, my hobby is mainly I've been June of this year will be my years being a manager at a wheel and tire shop. Okay. So my hobby is mainly vehicles and cars, dressing them up, and. That's pretty much my hobby. So my Good. job is my hobby. And I also like to stream. Cars. You like the cars. Yeah. Okay. Are you are you a technician? Like, could you get under the hood and I'm not a technician. We don't do any mechanical work. It's just like wheels and tires. Sure. But that's pretty much it, just like dressing up vehicles and that's yeah. basically what I do. There's different flows for for different people and different interests. Do uh, so. I mean, would you want to pursue cars in a way of if you, for whatever reason, landed on a bunch of money out of nowhere? Would you be someone to go out and buy a, a sports car or some sort of luxury vehicle? Or is it honestly, just... yes. My cars have mainly all been like sporty. Okay. But I would definitely. Uh, I just got a Durango recently that I love, and I dressed it up already. So, sure, cool. Um, well, check out Nino's on the road whipping the Durango. He's doing a thing. <laughs> if you guys need any wheels or tires? Let me know. I'm in Michigan. <laughs> I'm just playing. Are, are you really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I am too. So tires, we have to do winter tires here as well as regular. Nice. Tires. You stay pretty busy. I'll give you a set of tires for free, Chris. No, you can't. You cannot do that. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot do that. But I, pre I appreciate the offer. We have a whole a whole slide deck on why I cannot do that. So, but, I, but I appreciate Nobody it. Nobody has to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's like, I'll give you a set of tires, but I will take your job. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so you do cars, you stream a little bit, um, and you, you take some time in Michigan. So you probably would be up for doing some travel to Florida then. I mean – as a Michigander, Florida is like a the number I've one. I've actually never been out there either. Really? I've had a lot of streamers on here that invited me in Florida. They said it's beautiful, but life has life has would definitely be an opportunity. Florida's a magical land where in the same headline of a you can get discounted street corn underneath you'll read local man wrestles alligator for the last churro. You know, it's it's like, it's a very mystical, magical land, Florida, but we love it. We claim it, I think, I think so. Uh, <laughs> Ninos, is there anything else that you'd like to plug, talk about while we have you here? Honestly, I just want to really appreciate you. It was really nice meeting you, talking to you one-on-one. -on -one. Thanks for inviting me to be on your show and a big shout out to Secretary Ari as well. I really appreciate you guys. For sure. So I'm going to take a play out of regardless of your political views uh one of my favorite interviewers his name is john stewart and um i like how he's able to direct a conversation and one time he had a guest on it was actually elizabeth warren and he said he stopped the whole interview and he said you know what i feel like you haven't had the opportunity yet to say here something that you wanted to say and i've obviously directed a lot of this conversation 
I know you said thank you to us, but when it comes to you being a streamer or a person, is there anything that walking away from this conversation that you'd like people to know about you? Or do you f that you feel that while you're streaming doesn't get surfaced as often that is actually a part of you? Honestly, I'm really honest with my people and they know I don't try to fit in or play a role, you know, who I am is who I am on stream. So my people pretty much know everything about me. He says no secrets. All right, Ninos. Well, I guess my job here is done. I did it. <laughs> so, so, so I, I mean, want to give a special shout out to really quick. Big shout out. Is it fine? Yeah, yeah go for it. <laughs> Big shout out to my number one baby blue, to Missy, Boss Badge Missy, to KK, to Bull Beauty, to Chloe, to Magic Mike, to Timeless, Top Badge to Hakuna, to that Queen Killa, to PDJ, to Doreen, to Ben, to Daryl, to Apple, to Missy Hayati, to Aira Princess, and to Unicorn, to Memo, to Lolita, to Porgy. And if I miss anybody, I appreciate everybody. Thank you, Bongo Ben. <laughs> Thank you, Nino. Thank you I very much. Thank you so much, Chris and Ari, again. Thank you to everybody. Whoever just comes to my stream, spams my hearts, or guests in my guest box the gifts everything is appreciated sure thank you, guys. you did a great job thank you for rocking the puka thank uh, you so much it's not, is that a puka necklace or is that silver i i just realized now that that was not even a puka necklace that was silver ah oh, that poor guy he was out here calling his silver puka <laughs> puka necklace I'm sure it was. A, I'm sure it's a very fine silver necklace. At least me. <laughs> Correct me when I do this. That's why I said the thing at the end. I was like, I'm gonna take a play out of John Stewart's book here. Um, my name's Chris. Welcome to the city. He's, you know, he's a nice. He's just too much of a nice guy. He's too nice. I couldn't. I couldn't even get the necklace right. Uh, a special thank you to our three guests this evening. We had Sin. We had Joanna with the three A's. We're just joined by Ninos in the box, who is a tire wheeling, not Florida tripping type of thankful gratitude kind of person. Make sure you hit the favorite button on each of these wonderful people. I'd also like to say a special thank you to you watching right now. If you have any interest on being on this show, you'd like to be interviewed, you'd like to have more of your story out there and allow me to dig into some deep questions like, uh, have you ever been nervous? Yes. Have you ever been afraid? Yes. Uh, you know, those are, we ask the hard hitting questions and you can be here for it. So make sure that you reach out to Ari or myself. Live Fest 2024 is announced officially today. It is going on. Let me confirm that I'm not saying the wrong dates. <clears throat> The 7th, 8th, and 9th are the three days of Live Fest 2024. The rumors are true. It's here. So if you are a top badge, you are a VIP. You should have had an email sent out to you. Uh, you don't want to miss this. You don't want to miss it. It's taking place in Orlando, Florida. The RSVP list is up. It's up. It's been sent to you. Top badges, VIPs. So please do not miss it. Um, I think we're at time. We're at 10 p.m. So at this point, suited up is over. I'm going to change my profile picture. I'm announcing right now that the show's done. It's over. It's gone. All right. Now I'm going to stream for about two seconds to talk about a couple of things in my personal life in case you're interested. If you're not interested, I have made you fully aware that the show's done. Okay. So let me switch my profile picture real quick and then I'm going to talk about a couple of things. See? So the, the jacket's off. We're not suited up. Now we are business casualed up it's, bu it's business casual it's business casual up okay so my name's chris it's nice to see you hi dolly kim ninos to raven dolly uh, i want to say happy birthday to queen bossy they reached out they said hey chris it's my birthday happy birthday queen bossy to you um next next thing if you don't know i'm in a heavy metal band that is not a joke it's really actually true. I don't even believe it either. Neither do my bandmates. No one believes it. It's AI. It's AI generated. And if you want to see our our next, it's not. We work really hard, okay? Uh, we have our next single is dropping March 22nd. March 22nd is our next single. We just 
finished filming the music video for it. Uh, we have not got the video back yet. We're, we decided the last minute, we work with a really good team and they made some space for us to get it done. So we went to Detroit, we filmed from 1 p.m. to 1 a.m. It's 12 hours. We took a break for some barbecue in between and shenanigans. Um, so if you wanna hear that song, uh, it's gonna come out March 22nd and you can pre-save it now if you have Spotify, there's a link to it. Our current, our first single is our current only song out. It's called Guilt. You can check out Guilt. It's fast metalcore. It belongs in your gym playlist if you want to or not. If you don't like screaming, you know, you can be like my mom and my grandma and be like, I like the chorus, the chorus, you know, with the singing part. Uh, we've got some more music coming out for you May 17th. That'll be our third single. And July 5th is our fourth, uh, fourth single. After that, um, we will have more music because in April we're going to record more. So we're really, 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 really excited for this. Do you have any questions about anything? Oh, our name's Cause for Conflict. Thank you, Mike, with your abdominal photo. Um, I've got a couple minutes that I'll, I'll stick around um, and just, just talk for a sec. Actually, should I? Can I, uh, can I just put up like a normal thing? Let's see. Do I have like a, a picture of myself? Let's see. Mm, this is good enough. Okay, yeah. We'll just do it like this. Because <laughs> uh, I don't I don't want people to think we're doing suited up right now. And I can make my chair go higher. Okay, good. All right, there we go. All right. Hey, it's just me. I'm just doing a regular stream for a second. Um, this is cool. Look at us. We're in like a triangle of friendship. That's you. That's me. And that's over here is me being conscious that my mom's probably watching. Okay. That's not a joke. <laughs> Do you have any questions or not? Uh, you like triangles. I, I hope you can like triangles. Don't like pyramids, especially if it's a business model. All right. Um, somebody for top badge. Email it in. I'm sure it'll work out great. Who we got? uh thank you for checking out the song too by the way if you've checked out guilt already that means a lot oh the name of our song the name of our next song i'll tell you it here it's called eviscerator it's called eviscerator i could probably even leak the album art here should i do that i'll do that i'll leak the album art let me add an image all right uh, album let's see what's this called art and i gotta browse my image files do I have, do I even have this picture downloaded anywhere? Hit. Oh, there it is right there. Hold on. Open. Oh, hey, you can see it. Perfect. All right, hang on. I gotta, I gotta make it smaller. I know you can't see. Wow, this is, this is huge. It looks hairy. Why would they add that effect to this? Wow, that is not. All right, hold on. This is a very high quality image. You know, when lots of people are going to see it, you got to make sure that the, the image looks, I know, why, why is it, why is the album art hairy? All right, there you go. There's, there's the image. Uh, this is our album art for Eviscerator. You can see it there now. Cause for Conflict is our band name. Uh, and the name of the song is Eviscerator. This is, uh, it, it won't be copyrighted. It's my own song. It's not Negan's bat. This is not Lucille. This is not Lucille. This is a nail bat. Fun fact, these are legal to make. Uh, we looked it up because we thought we might make one for the music video. The truth is, I don't trust half the guys with one of these things, so I really did not want us to do this. Uh, so we don't we don't actually have it. But yeah, if you if you want to check it out, pre-save is already up. So pre-save is up for Eviscerator. Um, yeah, shout out to Dar. He's like, how do you pronounce that? Let me tell you. Okay, this is the only song title that I didn't title. Scott is responsible for the name of the song. And the reason is because back when we first formed the band, he had, this was the second song he had wrote. We threw this song away. Like this song was never, ever going to get released. And he heard, there's a part, but in like a bridge or a transition where it goes like, duh, 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 duh. and he heard the phrase eviscerator. And I scream it. So like, it's like, I'm not going to do it right now. You guys have to watch a music video for it or stream it when it comes out. But it's eviscerator is a person who eviscerates and eviscerating is a pretty brutal thing to do, right? It's, it's metal. I, you wouldn't use a nail bat to eviscerate, but the point is, is we thought it looked cool. 
anyway, you can uh, you can find us a cause for conflict. Our drummer's crazy, by the way. Drummer's crazy. Um, I just just said that. But it does look hairy, doesn't it, Alpha? That's what I was just saying. It looks like it's hairy. Um, it's probably because my name's Christopher. So we got a, you know, the fur. But there you go. It doesn't look bad zoomed out. What if what if I make it real small? This is like how it'll probably look on your phone, JK. You'll be able to read it. But see, I can blow it up real big. Harry is not my last name. That's my real Casper is my real last name. Like I'm in deep. I'm in deep. <laughs> I, I got my whole name here. All right. Um, any other thoughts, questions? Actually, I'm gonna look and see if anyone followed or favored us. I'm gonna send you a personal thank you right now. It's gonna be like, wow, you're really cool. You're a really cool person. I wanna say thank you to absolutely no one. <laughs> I did this promo for nothing. It's fine. It's good. All right. It's fine. <sighs> The music video is pretty cool to Gil. I'm serious. You will be surprised. All right, that's all I have to say. Any other things uh, to talk about before I go today? Any other stuff? That's rough. Jay Rose, it is tough out here. It's tough out here as an independent artist. Uh, will Live Fest be open to non-top badge? It 